Hello, I'm the ISO 27001 Ninja and we continue our journey through ISO 27001 clause by clause, ensuring that you're going to get maximum levels of success when it comes to your certification. So when it comes to 27001 clause 6, we're looking at planning. So section 6.1 is actions to address risks and opportunities. But in this particular blog, we're going to take a deep dive into 6.1.1 general. So as always, we're going to start with a little bit of reading. You're going to see me look off to the side as I read through it, but I'm going to read fast today, right? Uh, the links to the blog that this is uh, that goes along with this video are going to be below in the YouTube. So be sure to click the blog and read and get more detail. But for now, I'm going to speed read. You can go there if you need it. So when planning for the information security management system, the organization shall consider the issues referred to in 4.1 and the requirements referred to in 4.2 talk about them in a minute and determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed. They will ensure the information security management system can achieve its intended outcomes, prevent or reduce undesired effects, achieve continual improvement. The organization shall plan actions to address these risks and how to integrate and implement the actions into its information security management system processes and evaluate the effectiveness of these actions. Now we're looking at risk management. Here we're looking at planning. If we go for the nuance of this particular clause, we can see actually this is looking at risk associated with the information security management system. So at this point, it isn't necessarily calling out to the risks associated with our information security posture or associated with the statement of applicability, but the approaches are gonna be the same. So to satisfy this particular clause, it says take into account 4.1 and 4.2. Now that is needs and expectations of interested parties and internal and external issues. And there are videos on both of those clauses as well as blogs that you can reference back to. So what it's saying is, and we covered that in those particular videos is, let's look at what our internal issues are. Let's look at what our external issues are. If they represent a risk, let's put them on our risk register and let's, reg um, let's manage them through risk management. In addition to that, if our interested parties represent some level of risk to our management system, equally, let's put them on the risk register and let's manage them through the risk management process as well. So quite specific to the ISMS at this stage. To implement this control, actually, you're just going to implement your overall risk management process, right? I mean, ISO 27001 is a risk based standard, right? It is based on the identification and the mitigation of risk. And we've touched on this a number of times. It's not a rule based system. It doesn't tell you exactly what you need to do. It says, go away, assess what risks you've got. Have a look at these controls, see whether or not these controls mitigate that risk or not. If they do, here is some guidance to the level that you can go and implement them that will hopefully mitigate and address the risk that you've got. So if I was going to implement this, what do I need? I need a couple of things, right? And again, these couple of things are going to cover a number of clauses and a number of controls when we get to Annex A. We're going to need a continual improvement policy. So our policy that sets out the statements of what we do, not how we do it. We need a continual improvement policy. We need a risk management policy. So we're going to write and define our risk management policy. We need a risk management process. In addition to that, we're going to define our risk management process. Now, it doesn't come as a surprise with the ISO 27001 template store on Hightable.io. All of those templates are available to you individually. And there are a series of videos on my YouTube that show you how to create them and how to build them from scratch. If you don't want to spend a couple of pounds less than a mochaccino with me, that's absolutely fine. I give you the videos and I give you the guides on how to create them. But you're going to need those particular you're going to need those particular uh, uh, artifacts. So when it comes to complying, how am I going to comply? To comply with this particular version of the standard, I'm going to complete uh, clauses 4.1 and 4.2. So internal and external issues, needs and expectations of interested parties. I'm going to complete the documentation, decide whether or not they represent a risk or not, add them to my risk register if they do. I'm going to build my information security management system. Uh, there are other blogs on that, 4.4 uh, I think it was. Uh, there's a blog and a video that talks you through how to build your information security management system. I'm going to build that. I'm going to implement my risk management policy. Uh, I'm going to implement my risk management process. I'm going to implement my risk register. And I'm going to populate my risk register with the risks that are associated 
with those particular clauses. And as part of that, I'm going to put my risk planning in place. So what are the things that I am going to do to mitigate the risk that I have identified? Remembering that risk acceptance is a very valid step in the risk management process. As long as you've identified the risk, you do have the ability, the capability uh, to accept that risk as well. As long as you know about it, acceptance is management as well. And as part of that, we're going to put in our regular monitoring and review, our annual risk review. We're going to put in our monthly management review team meeting where we're going to go ahead and we're going to re uh, review those particular risks. So in terms of this particular clause, I'm going to keep it quite short because what we are going to do in other videos, uh, other blogs, other guides is actually dig a lot deeper into the risk management process, the risk register, the risk policy and show you a little bit more detail around how you would do that. So rather than do that in each of these individual videos, be sure to go to my YouTube, subscribe to the channel by clicking below and you're going to be able to find those videos and I'm going to be able to talk you through it. But that is for today, ISO 27001 clause 6.1.1 and I am Stuart Barker, I am the ISO 27001 Ninja and until the next video and the next guide, peace out.